Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to subscribe, like, comment, and share this show. Now let's get started with today's show. If you're considering a podcast, you're probably wondering whether you should do an audio podcast, video podcast, or both. Let's talk about audio podcasting first. Audio podcasting is growing. In April 2020, Apple announced that they have 1 million podcast shows on Apple Podcasts. The statistics site Statista reported that in 2006, only 22% of people were aware of podcasts. By 2020, that number had climbed to 75%. Listenership has also grown from 32 million in 2013 up to 88 million in 2019. And that number in listeners is projected to grow up to 164 million by 2023. The growth in podcasting can be attributed to many factors, including hands-free content consumption while driving or doing other things, a preference for on-demand audio content as opposed to broadcast radio, and the meteoric rise of smart devices such as Amazon's Alexa. Though Apple is still the dominant podcast platform as I'm recording this, the growth in podcasting has spurred some powerful content players to in- enter this market, including Spotify and Google Podcast. So podcasting is definitely on track to become a solid content format for the future. And if your content can be communicated or conveyed through audio, you should look at adding a podcast to your self-publishing offerings. That's the good news. Here's the not so good news about audio podcasting. While those growth numbers are impressive, podcasts are still just a very small sliver of the internet content pie. While 1 million sounds like a lot compared to blogs, it's just a little bit. There are about, as I'm recording this, 500 million blogs by a lot of conservative estimates. And that's at the early part of the 2020s. Some estimates that include Tumblr blogs peg that worldwide blog number at about 1 billion with a B. Part of the reason that audio podcasts haven't gained the traction that blogs have, it has to do with technology. It's easy for computer algorithm robots to scan and sift through mountains of text-based data. And that helps blogs, SEO, and search engine visibility. Audio content, not so much, at least not yet. Other SEO and search engine issues with podcasting is on the listener side too, because listeners need to know what shows they want to listen to. Let's say they're using a smart device like an Alexa. They can't just say, hey, Alexa, um, play me a business podcast. There are thousands of business podcasts and since they still can't sort through all of that audio data, how would they know which one to play for you? And so listeners really have to be very intentional with their podcast listening. And just from my personal experience and observation, they are. Usually listeners will be very selective in their show choices. And the other part of the problem with podcasts is one that's also part of the problem with blogs uh, overall is that some of them can be super niche. There's nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't mean that you should create a podcast show that has mass appeal, but it does mean that your listener base could be really, really small. So let's look at video podcasting. Video has become ubiquitous all over the internet and social media. And it's not surprising that video podcasting can be very popular. Like audio podcasts, video podcasts usually discuss one or a few topics and are often published on a regular schedule, like daily, weekly, or monthly. 
video podcasters may also offer the audio version of the show with the audio just ripped from the video as a standalone audio podcast. So they create two types of content at the same time. This is what I do. This is a really efficient strategy that helps podcasters expand their reach to both audio listening and video viewing audiences. As with audio podcasting, video podcast files need to have a home on the internet and a way to distribute the show to viewers. Podcasters can host their video podcast on platforms for podcasting such as Libsyn, Blueberry, Podbean, and a fee is charged for the file storage that you consume on these podcast platforms. Because video files are heavy, uh, they can rack up the fees, monthly fees, pretty fast. But there is an alternative. YouTube. The high cost of hosting video podcast content on these podcast sites really turns a lot of podcasters to YouTube for hosting the video version of their podcast. Plus, listeners may also just listen to the audio on YouTube. I've had a number of my listeners say that that's what they do. They're just on YouTube for other reasons, and so they come across my podcast, and then they just listen to it. They don't actually watch the video portion of it. Even though YouTube is the second most visited internet site as I'm recording this, it doesn't mean that podcast listeners and viewers will automatically find your show there. Podcast subscribers may also not associate YouTube with podcasts, so they'll consider any video podcast content you upload to YouTube as just regular videos. It's not such a bad thing, though. The good thing is that if you optimize your podcast videos on YouTube with your title, description, keywords, and hashtags, your show has a better chance of being found and followed on YouTube. Which one should you do? Audio podcasting or video podcasting? I believe that podcasters should do both if they have the ability and comfort level to do video in addition to audio. Here's my experience and why I suggest this. In 2016, I started a podcast that was focused on business blogs and books. It was a slow starter and within four months I had abandoned it. But as interest in audio content was growing for both podcasts and audiobooks, I resurrected the podcast in March 2018 and refocused it to cover publishing exclusively. Then in September 2018, at the suggestion of one of my blog readers, I added a video version to the podcast, and I did that on YouTube. I do the video of each episode, I record it, and then I rip the audio from the video file and then post the audio file as the podcast on my podcast platform. And both the audio and video are published at the same time so that my viewers and listeners can choose which one they want. By the end of 2020, I had achieved 5,000 downloads of all my podcast episodes from 2016 to 2020. Not a lot compared to the big shows, of course, but I have a niche topic. In contrast to the audio podcast, at the end of 2020, views of my podcast videos on YouTube were up over 9,000. So my YouTube podcast videos have gained much more traction in an even shorter period of time. And I'm continuing to do both because I believe that you should go multi-format and multi-channel with your content. Here's a special note for authors. Do not offer your books with podcast episodes as chapters. You will not get paid for this. Most podcasts are consumed for free. 
So you're better off doing an audiobook of your book content. Now I show you how to do that in my Udemy course, How to Self-Publish an Audiobook. I will include a link to that in the uh, show description here so that you can check that out. And I hope you found this helpful as you make some decisions about your future content as an author. And if you did find it helpful, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast platform you like to use. I'm on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Pandora. Um, if there's a podcast platform, I'm probably on it. If you like the YouTube video better, you just have to subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss an alert when a new video is available. If you would share either the audio podcast or the video podcast with your friends on social media, I would appreciate that. My self-published books are available on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is search for my name, Heidi Thorne, and my author page will come up and you'll see all the books available listed there. If you want to connect with me, my website is very simply HeidiThorne.com. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode. In the meantime, have a great day.